This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. If you're really going to make use of the power of ifs, you're highly likely to be nesting them. So that is placing an if statement inside another if statement. Now, up until 2007 Excel, this was limited to seven levels. So you could embed seven ifs inside other ifs, and that could get quite complicated. Well, in 2007, the ability to nest was increased to 64, and that still exists in 2010. Now, the chances are you won't need that many, but it's nice to know that they're there. So when you nest, as long as you keep the original syntax in mind, then you'll find the logic follows. So let's take the if spreadsheet that's in your working folder and use the double if worksheet in there. What we have here is the same results we've seen before and that we're trying to figure out if people have passed. However, there is now an additional merit rate. So if you get over 40%, you have passed, fine. However, if you get over 60, you get a merit badge as well. So you've not just passed, you've passed with merit. Let's take Mike for starters and say, right, equals if, if his score is greater than pass rate, then, now just before we can say he's passed, if he's got greater than pass rate, we then need to check whether he's actually got greater than the merit rate. So in place of the value if true, we place another if. That becomes equals if the score is greater than the merit rate, then we need the value here. Well, if they've got greater than that, then they will be a merit. Else, close brackets. So that bracket there closes that bracket there. Now nicely it's color coded in Excel, so things become a little easier to follow. This whole if statement here, which has in itself a condition, a true and a false, is actually the whole true statement for the outer if statement. So after there, we need a comma for the false. Now this false refers to that logical statement there, where the mic is higher than the pass rate. So if he isn't, he's failed. And then we close the outer if. So that closed bracket is black to match the opening bracket. And this is green and green. So that whole if statement with its three parts, condition, true, false, is actually the whole true bit for the outer if statement. And if we press return, we see that Mike actually is a merit. Now, before we can drag that down, we need to do the dollaring up, the absoluting of the two values of merit and pass. And then we can take that down to the bottom. Mary's failed, John's merit, Julian's a pass, Sally's failed, Guy's failed. So that's using a nested if, one if inside another if. Now we can make this formula just a little bit more complicated by actually putting in a fail rate here of 25%. Now the idea there is actually anyone who gets below 40, they haven't passed, but they haven't failed. We're going to allow them to resit. So if we go back to our original formula here for Mike, we follow the logic through. So firstly, is Mike's score greater than the pass rate? Yes, it is. We drop into here. Is Mike's score greater than the merit rate? If it is, he gets merit. If not, then he's just a pass. If we go back to here and assume that he's not greater than the pass rate, then we drop into the false side of that if, and let's replace that with another if. So if Mike's score is less than fail rate, then he really has failed. However, if he isn't less than the fail rate, but obviously he's not more than the pass rate ever, so he's between the fail rate and the pass rate, then we're actually going to allow them to resit. The resit becomes the false part of this if. So I close those brackets. These sets of brackets here are green. So that if on its own must sit and make sense of its syntax. So B2 less than G4, true part, false part, that's fine. This if that is effectively embedded as the true part of the outer if must also make sense in its own right. So condition, true, false. The only thing left there is to dollar that up and then return. So if we take that formula now and drag it to the bottom, we'll find that Mary gets to resit and as does Sally, because their scores are not below 25%. I mean, Mary's around the limit. She's not below. Below would be a fail. And the only person who's failed is, oh, me. So this is nesting ifs. As long as the logic of the nested if is followed through, so a condition, a true, and a false, then you'll find that your nested ifs work.
quite well. As they start to get more and more nested, and you can go down to 64 levels, that's not just 64 ifs, that's 64 levels. So here I've only gone down one level, but I've actually got two ifs. So I've got one in the true and one in the false part. If you keep putting more ifs in the true and the false part of each one, the next level down, which is only two levels in, will actually contain two for here and two for here. That's four more ifs. So that becomes four, five, six, seven, including the original actual ifs. And we're only two levels down. So they can get quite messy. But when they start to get that messy, you need to follow the logic through and figure out whereabouts you are in the if. So this is the original question. You can then either go down two routes, this one or this one. If I go down this route, that's my second question. But that second question only applies to those values that have actually become true off the first question. So you've got to look at the question route that you're following. But sometimes you can get yourself in a right twist and find you never end up in any part of the formula because you've not covered all bases. So it's worth following the logic through, maybe even drawing that out in a flow diagram first before you then commit to creating the actual formula. But having said that, we can do it. Keep the logic correct. Watch your syntax. Every if, like that one there, must have the same syntax. Equals if, open brackets, condition, true, false. Notice that the embedded ifs don't have an equals in front of them. Only the original one does here. So that one's embedded, same logic. If, condition, true, false. The outer if is the same condition, true, false. It just so happens that its whole true statement is replaced by another if, and its full false statement is replaced by another if. And we could do the same again to there. We could take that whole fail and build in another if to check another condition as we effectively drill into the values of the formula. That's nested ifs. Don't forget you can go to 64 levels, but I somehow doubt that you will need that many.